This film is brought to you by 4-H, America's largest youth development organization. In collaboration with Montana State University and Terrapod. Out in the ocean, they say the water's clear. Oh, but I live on the river here. Halfway between the mountains and the sea. That was really fun, like getting to see the fish and seeing how they live in their environment and how the pollutants actually hurt them. Somebody else want to be plankton? Damon does. Plankton. He wants to be a little bit bigger fish. Oh, got, wait, wait, wait. You want to be a person? I want to be a person. So there's a bunch of plankton, say, swimming around with a little bit of PCBs in them. Um, and it's not really hurting them necessarily, but if a little fish comes and eats a bunch of plankton, then they end up with a lot more PCBs in their system. Chemicals in water, such as PCBs or fertilizers or uh, pharmaceuticals, you know, start with uh, plankton or, or smaller creatures living in the water. Let's see some plankton moving. They just blow with the water! <laughs> oh, she's got it. This is a good plankton movement. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't really realize they're causing problems until they start showing themselves in the food chain. So you guys are down in the bottom of the river and you're eating a little bit or something. What you're building up in your system is... Yeah, these are some PCBs. We also have some other chemicals. What kind of chemical could this be? I got two. So eat up these plankton. And does it give the same amount as the plankton had, or do you have more in your system than the plankton more. had? More. Yeah. And it works its way up until you get to the top of the food chain where there's either the bigger fish or then even people that have this really high concentration of a chemical in their body. Now come on over, people. Now here comes your fish dinner. You guys are going to share this fish with you, okay? If we eat the animals that eat the fish that eat the plankton, then we'll have PCBs in us, too. And that pollution causes deformities or makes people sick or causes cancer in different creatures or, you know, kills them completely. There have been studies in the last few years that have shown that fish in certain streams have high levels of pharmaceuticals in them and it's causing these species to not be able to reproduce. Especially with the white perch. Wait, can I see that cabbage? Oh, there's one right there. <laughs> My mom has a garden out front. I don't let her use any pesticides or anything like that. Use the um, compost instead of the, fer the chemical fertilizers. Not throwing out batteries is a big thing too. Like I unplug things at home when I'm not using them, like my cell phone charger and things like that. We try to cut down on uh, water use at my house. Your county or municipal landfill, they usually have recycling um, options for paints and oils and things like that. You can also tell all your neighbors, like, this is what you can do to help out. This is what we can do to together save our water so that when it comes back into our bodies and into our friends' bodies, that it's going to be clean. So I say, sailing up my dirty street, still I love it, and I'll keep the dream that someday, though maybe not this year, my Hudson River will once again run clear. Out in the ocean, they say the water's clear. Oh, but I live on the river here. Halfway between the mountains and the sea, tacking to and fro, this thought returns to me. So I say, sailing up my dirty stream, still I 
always love you And I'll keep the dream That someday, though maybe not this year My Hudson River will once again run clear Sailing up my dirty stream Still I love you And I'll keep the dream this film is brought to you by 4-H, America's largest youth development organization. In collaboration with Montana State University and Terrapod.